All right, so this is going to be a question and answer session. Okay, I believe there's somebody here, right, who has a question, I believe, and I trust that as we ask and answer these questions, your lives will be blessed. Amen. All right, so without much ado, my first question goes to Pastor, esteemed Pastor Vaya. Okay, so what is the difference between evangelism and soul winning? Thank you so much, woman of God. It's a blessing. I'd like to thank the Spirit of God for the opportunity. A man of God, a highly esteemed evangelist. Evangel and soul winning. Evangelism is actually witnessing the life of Jesus and the glorious kingdom of our Lord through the preaching of the gospel of Christ to the unsaved world while soul winning is bringing men in darkness into the glorious light of God and giving them the opportunity to experience the life of Jesus by leading them to Christ and letting them accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. So first of all, we do evangelism and then we win the souls. And there is, there is a message you need to carry with you. The message of love. John 3, 16 talks about the love of Jesus and how he did not come to condemn us. You tell them that it is only one name that they call upon. And by so doing, Romans chapter 10 verses 10 says, with their hearts they believe and with their mouth confession will be made. Thank you, Manu. It's a blessing. I believe someone has learned something because most of the time we believe evangelism is the same as soul winning. But thank you so much for explaining the difference to us. All right, so esteemed Dick and Fred, the next question is to you. Is the believer authorized to cast out devil and heal the sick? Thank you very much. Um, the again person has the legal authority to cast out devils. So far as you are born of God in John chapter 1 verse 12, which says that anyone who that has received has power. You have the legal authority to cast that devil. Jesus, Jesus even demonstrated that in Mark 16 and he didn't give specifics of who should cast out devils. He said, but they that believe in his word and they that carry his word, just to paraphrase, is it those ones are the ones that will cast out devils. The evidence that will follow, follow them, casting out devils is one of them. And uh, people who have done it is like someone like um, Philip in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8. He also demonstrates casting out devils. So it's not only left for the ministers, but every believer is, has the authority. I say whether you are ready for it, that's another discussion. Thank you. Wow. It's a blessing. Now our third question goes to esteemed evangelist Benedicta, the chairman for the conference, right? How do we avoid arguments and distractions on the field? How do we avoid arguments and distractions on the field? Thank you, Ma. Let us take a scripture from Titus. Titus 3, verse 9, King James Version, and it says, but avoid foolish questions and geologies, contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. It means there is a chance for arguments out there, but we are advised by God to avoid it. So there are two ways out in this. The way we present ourselves on the field is one way out. If you present yourself giving room for arguments, you get argument. One, there are some controversies in the Bible. Now, if you indeed want to be addicted soul winner, you must dare to avoid. Example like ladies wearing tra. Yeah, ladies wearing tra. Because in the book of, in the law, they gave against women wearing something that pertains to men. But today, 
The trial is meant for a woman. But that doctrine differences is there. So they still think trial is for men. So maybe if you meet a group like that and in trial as a lady, you are in for an argument in sobbing that so. So you can avoid it. So as addicted sobbing we don't wear trial as ladies to the field. You can, oh, didn't you hear that they say women should not wear trial? Argument has started. You use a whole day to defend that. It can be avoidable. Secondly, like how on the scene I came, so many distractions here and there. People throwing questions at you. You have to be sensitive to know the spirit of distraction is at work. Then you take over the atmosphere by praying and subjecting every contrary spirit to the opinion of Christ. Wow. Then you can minister to the people. Wow, this yes. is beautiful. We are learning. We are learning. We are learning. God bless you all. All right, so now, esteemed Pastor Vida, over to you again. What's the role or essence of prayers and intercession? in evangelism and soul winning what's the role and essence thank you so much woman of God prayer is an essential role in evangelism but prayer in person is a relation between you and God through fellowship in thanksgiving in supplication in intersections and in in intersections yes through that, you are spiritually revitalized for the supernatural. And so, as a soul winner, you are eventually an intercessor, interceding, battling with forces of darkness that has blinded the eyes of men who reject the word of God when it's been preached. And so, it is very important that before you go on the field, as you can see in the skit we've done, we have prayed. We have prayed. We have prayed in months, not a month, in months, praying for the soul, praying for that community before the day we go on the field. And when you go on the field, it is easy. We pray on the chart as well, every material we are using on the field. And so you can see that some rejected the word, but we gave them chart, believing that the Spirit of God will rest upon that chart. And when they go home, they'll be convicted in that to study their tracks and receive Christ. We have received a lot of testimonies on the field. So it is very important that your personal fellowship as a soul winner is essential and in interceding for the souls around your world or your community is very essential. It makes smooth evangelism. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, if you're here and you've not been praying, please check your prayer life. <laughs> Thank you so much for the advice. Okay, so the next question goes to you. Who is responsible to evangelize? The minister or everyone who is born again? Did you get it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the, the responsibility of sowing as for every every believer okay. the same like we stated the response of casting out devils mm. is for every believer because they go together um the the man of god or the ministers called are gifts to the church they are gifts to the church their responsibility primarily is to build people for this mandate so the life of the believer is for that your life your personal life and also the expression of the love of christ that is so willing so the job in Ephesians 4 if we read from the 12 down is to build the believer for the work of the ministry and the work of the ministry here is so winning and if you could like um like you really said in Acts chapter one you realize that jesus tarry now the equipping of the saints is a tarrying is a is a waiting and as you induce the power you are released out there to go into your community to go first to your family your community and to the ends of the world so the believer is the one that is equipped to win souls not just any believer you you need to be equipped equipped and deals with power to get a job done thank you so much that's wonderful and that's what makes this conference very special we are here to be equipped and equipped for the kingdom agenda amen god bless you so much 
And our final question goes to you, esteemed evangelist Benedicta. What security measures should we put in place for a smooth evangelical work? What security measures should we put in place? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, there must always be a measure to put in place for a smooth running of anything, everything in life, as well as evangelism. So we can say, first of all, we must dress smartly to evangelism. One of our members were wearing slippers. Slippers is not allowed. It's not make you look smart. You can step on nails and so many things. So we might be smartly dressed. And we don't carry a lot of loaves because three hours under sun is hectic. So we need to move freely. And let's take this scripture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. It said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as doves. That is God or Christ speaking to us. You know, out there, among we smokers, so many as display. So we might be wise. That's why we don't send two ladies to get us. You, might, you can't send two ladies to get us. No, it is never done. <laughs> Their life wow, is in trouble. Good. Yeah, you cannot, like just a lady, just ministering to a man alone mm. in an isolated place. Mm. It happens a lot. Going to minister, they end up being ministered to. That's and right. they got pregnant and wow. so many things. That's why the Lord sent them pair, pair. The Lord sent them pair, pair. So you send them pair for protection and also to help each other. Maybe in times of some questioning, mm. if one cannot, you can help. That's why those are all security measures and so many more wow. to get a job done. Wow. Thank Honestly, you. we need this gender balance because I realize there's gender balance in yes. evangelism as well. Yes, yes. What a blessing. Yes, yes. This has been a very educative session and we are grateful. I believe, I just want you to have, we are rounding up with just some 30 seconds of your final words. Just 30 seconds. Okay. I believe maybe something has come up in your mind that you would just want to share with them. Just 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Just give us some final words. Thank you so much. My final word is that this is God's desire to us, as sons of God, that we have a daily responsibility to intercede for salvation of souls of men around the world. And in the kingdom of God, Value is placed on souls. And so if you call yourself a kingdom-minded Christian, then you must acknowledge that God places value on souls. Thank wow. you. Wow. God places value on souls. Every soul is a soul. Hallelujah. Please, your 30 seconds. Thank you so much. I, my 30 seconds is this. That God needs you, not primarily, Mr. God is interested in you to change you, change your family, and change the community around you. If God, if Jesus could pick 70 ordinary men and you can change communities, God needs you. And God was able to, and people in the Bible, in the book of Acts, you realize that there were ordinary men like Philip that was picked to change Samaria. The Bible said there was joy in the city. So God expects you to bring joy in the city. Thank wow. you. Wow. Wow, God needs you. God uses ordinary people. Just you and the Lord can do amazing things. Beautiful. Your last words. Thank you, Ma. Evangelism and soul winning require diligence. Because there are many misunderstandings or lack of knowledge out there. First of all, you must understand and be convicted about the message as a soul winner, first of all. And when you get to the field, you try to ask many questions. You can see, because many people are born again because they go to church. They again, they are born again because probably they sing at church, born into Christian family. But you must ask questions to be able to fetch out the unsaved, basing your argument on Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, wow. until they believe and confess there's no salvation. So let's do diligence work to fetch the unsaved. I lead them to Christ. 
Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Don't forget this word, diligence. When you go find out the meaning and let it be in your heart. We are attaching diligence to the soul work. God bless you all for the time. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.